Good evening and welcome back to the shop. So I'm going to show you tonight how we're going to create a designer table top to, that's fitting for the base that we made so far. I got it uh, put together. It's not actually glued up, but it, you are seeing now the full look of the table. Um, it needs to be final sanded and then I'll glue up the uh, the base and we'll be good to go. But the top got got to thinking about it. What would be appropriate on here? And I think last time we talked about um, continuing with the zebra wood into the top so there would be this continuity with the top. But what would the field be in the middle? Now before we get to that, I had to decide on the substrate material for the top. So we've got a, um, usually on these tabletops, we've, this is actually just one of the, our, our end tables from the shaker course. And that top is three quarters of an inch thick, but then it, it's undercut beveled. So the edge actually reads about seven sixteenths thick. So it looks very thin, but it, it's appropriate with the thin feet here. Again, I, when I hold up a piece of uh, three quarter inch material, like let's just take a look at this on here. It just feels a little heavy and I'm thinking I'm going to have these vertical lines. So have to decide, you know, what kind of thickness do we want to go with our top? I decided three quarter was too thick and I'm not going to un undercut bevel. So I wanted some material that would work and five eighths would actually be really good. Unfortunately, I didn't have any five eighths on hand. I had this half inch plywood and it's like a three, three core. I mean, that might work, but it's a little too thin, I think. So I needed to build this material up and I found downstairs, I happen to have some large sheets of 16th inch thick poplar. So this would be that special thickness veneer that you could get from certainly wood. And this is poplar. And so I just went ahead and took a, squ a square, um, approximately 17 inch square, and I laminated or veneered on both sides with our 16th inch plywood. I mean, um, veneer. And that's what I've got here. Okay. So this now is that same plywood with a thicker appearance. So we went from wow. that to that. And that looks more appropriate to me. We are going to pick up a touch more thickness with the, the veneer going on top. And, um, but that's fairly negligible. And the vertical graining on the edge will be interesting to look at as well. So we'll see how it goes. Now, I'm not going to go with as extreme an overhang as I went with on the other table. We had like a inch and a quarter, inch and a half, I think is on that other table and it's undercut beveled. But here I, I wanted a little more federal like, which has shallower overhang. So it's only going to have about a five eighths of an inch overhang and that will feel more appropriate. It could even be slightly less than that, but Felt like that's good. So I went ahead and I sized this two dimensions. So this is now 16 and a half and by a square. And this is the core of the top that we're going to have go on there. Well, let me just show you first uh, how we get the edging on there, because I like to do the edging first and then, um, and then we'll veneer the top on this one, because we've already got this veneer on the bottom. I'm not going to even bother applying any more veneer here. We've got a piece of plywood and we've got 16th inch veneer underneath. So that's going to be a nice bottom. I'll do the edge first and then the top and then probably put a line in similar to this ebony around the edge. So again, we are going to use our zebra wood for the edging. So I want to cut, get this square. So you can see that grains running a little angular there. So all I would do is find 
approximately square to the, the grain there. And then I'm just going to drop it down. So I've got to correct that skewed cut there. And I'll just use my veneer saw again. To get our edging, we need our, our top as it is right now. Let's see what it measures. It's between 9 16 and 5 8. So we need to cut extra so we have a little overhang. So we're going to do that at 11 16. Rather than mark it all out every time, one thing I do is I just put a piece of tape on my, my rule right at the 11 16. And so that, that piece of tape will just give me that 11 16. That's my two inch tape over here. So. I'm just looking for the 11 16 set her down, and here we go. Just gonna get Some a nice... Some would call that a great idea. Whoops. It is. Oh, this is working great. <laughs> so, actually, this, this um, veneer is kind of roly-poly and um, puckered a little, and so because I'm flattening it like this, and where the grain is so short in this way that when you cut it, it will fracture. But usually you can just pop it together with a piece of tape anyway. So I'm going to be a little lighter handed here. Go backwards here. Dean's got a question, Tom. Says, uh, could you bevel cut MDF and suck the veneer down with the vacuum press? Yes, Dean, you could. You can make it identical to um, to the other tabletop with MDF, and then, yeah, exactly. You could, you'd. However, I don't think you could do it like I think you might be saying. You'd actually have to make a border around the underneath bevel there, and you'd have to cut that veneer separately. So, if you just tried to suck that down, you're going to have too much material on the corners. So I would just keep going like that until I had a bunch of these like this. I'm thinking of arranging this in a pleasing way. Let's just go something like that. So I'm going to take a little square. So I'm just going to come right in here, get my veneer saw, and very lightly cut a nice little square edge there. Now we'll lay it over the top and find out where it matches nicely. I don't have to take much off. I can just go right there. Where is it? I couldn't even see. Okay, so now I'll flip it around. And again, we're just gonna skim that apart. Okay, so there we have our edging. And we'll pull that together. Now I could do this against the straight edge, but I think it'll stay pretty straight. And, and there'll be a little flex. It should be pretty darn straight, given that I cut it square. And that will do it. All right, so it's very fragile, as you've already seen. So I don't want to handle it too much. But this would be easily put on the edge. But here, I'm going to show you one that's already been glued, okay? So I glued the edging on opposite edges to do it. So this one's all set up. This has been sitting in the clamps. We've got glue on the edge and then these calls on each side, which are covered with packing tape, as you guys reminded me, and I had forgotten that to use packing tape and I and I put packing tape on my calls no veneer sticking to the call you can see how I already did that edge and the opposite edge but whenever I peel it off I'm not pulling it straight I try to roll it and kind of go diagonally and you're less likely to pull fibers out like mm -hmm. that okay so we're gonna trim it off we could do this with like a, a router setup a sophisticated you know you could set it up at the um, router table and skin it off, but you can also just use your, your veneer saw. The trick is to keep it flat on the table while it's such a narrow edge. So I just kind of 
get on the top of it like that. I'm gonna go that way first so I don't break it off the edge. That's nice. Get the other side. Danny's asking when you glue uh, down the veneer, the glue seeps into the veneer. If the glue seeps right through, does that show through when you apply the finish coat? Um, Lacquer, shellac. I, I've never had that a problem. Um, it's only on porous woods that you'll get that happening. However, it, you know, if you have like a burl or something, there's usually lots of little holes in it. I put a little too much. It's, it's so small that it's not a problem. I mean, ideally, the best glue for that to never show up is uh, hide glue, but it's tricky to work with. And I've never, I don't have an issue with it. Only if you don't clean it off, it will give you a problem. I mean, it, in sanding, it'll be all taken care of. Anyway, if you had anything squeezed through. Mike's curious if it would be better for a novice to start with more overhang to cut off. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I don't know if you want, yeah, you could use, I, you'll see if you do it, an eighth inch more than the thickness is, is plenty, really, because, you know, I, you notice those pieces of tape I had wrapped around, that keeps it in position while you put the clamps on. So that a sixteenth of an inch on each side is pretty gracious. So I don't think you'll have trouble. And lastly, we'll get that one. All right, so there you go. There's our top. Let's check it out. There you go. You know what it looks like? It's really cool. It looks pretty much like everything else, just up higher <laughs> and wider. <laughs> but now we got to put on that up. the top. So I'm not going to go through the process, but uh, it's just like when we glued on the legs. I would just get some glue on here, some ample glue. And then I took the little um, glue roller and I rolled the glue out so that we had an even spread on there. And then once that's on, I come up with the, the edging and gently lay it down. And then you can actually just kind of wipe it down and center it as you go. Then I just come across and tape it in position. Just like four of them will hold it there. And then I just flip quickly and set it on the table and go ahead and glue this side. And then I'll go ahead and set each one on like the sandwich. Get a clamp on the end, flip it around, and then you'll end up having the clamps on as you just saw me a second ago. So that's a crash course in edging. Now we're gonna think about what to do on the main field. Um, I debated with this, like we've got this, the zebra wood, which has this nice brown color you know, a nice variety of browns and uh, light tan color. And, um, you know, what would be, what would be good for that infield with this zebra wood? You know, if this is going around the border, which is going to be also radiating like this. So we want everything to kind of radiate out and almost look like it's spilling over the side there. So, um, for the infield, I played around with some darker colored woods, some dark brown, and also the mahogany. And you know, it just didn't work as well as lighter colored materials. So if you see, I've got some curly maple here. Because of the, because of the warm kind of tan in that, I thought that might make a nice infield, right? Mm. And then we'll have a little black line there to help as well. But um, so I tried this and I liked it, but 
I had this other curly that is more than curly. It's blistered. More random than, and, than just stripey. And I thought this would look very nice yes. with, look at that. Because this way you're not combining stripes and stripes, but you do have the stripe, but it's more random pattern. I thought it might look better on the infield. Mm. All right, with a little ebony line and then an edge of ebony as well. So now I've got a piece. This was the actual end of the piece. Now what's, what's I'm trying to do here is to ha end up with a, a match. We're going to do a four-piece match. So I'll have a seam going out to the corner, each corner. So you have four basic, basically triangles that are going to fit here. And because the grain is radiating this way, I thought it'd be fun to make it go around like that. So kind of flip around, have that radiating, and the grain will be carrying this way. Now one of the things that you try to achieve a lot of times when you do this type of thing is come close to having the grain match up along the seam. It's tricky with this because if you do it in this orientation, the, the actual grain of the board, the growth rings are running this way, but it's so busy with the curl that it's not a big deal if those don't look perfectly right, but you try to get them right. And on every time you have a book match, the curl actually flips. Uh, visually, like the way it catches light, but it's gonna, it'll look nice. Don't worry. <laughs> Every guitar you see, like, has that where they have the seam down the middle, has that flip pattern. Um, but one of the things I do to try to ensure the, a close grain match, and you can do this on almost precisely when you do like a crotch figure. Um, and I'll show you that someday where we get really, we really nail that, the grain. But for this time, these pieces were cut kind of oddly. And I've got this wavy grain along the edge. And this one's a little narrower than the ones. So I try to line up the grain. Even though these are sequential, they're not, they're not always easy to get set up so they read the exact same with the grain all the way down through the layers. And that's what you have to have in order to get the grain lines to match around. So I'm just going to get them like close. You know, I, I'm looking at the ripply edge and I could see that I was pretty, pretty close right there. So I put some tape on there. Now I already cut a piece off. That's why you're seeing the angle. Um, I tried to get some ready ahead and I'm just going to do a little bit of this. I want to show you how this piece match goes. We're going to have our triangle in this fashion and I'm going to, so I want to cut a nice 90 degree angle right there so these four pieces fit. I've got a template piece that is dead square on our dead square uh, Crosscut sled. You can reference uh, that video. We do three, three cut, cut method. method. Yes. Yeah, and we actually show how to make that whole sled in another. If you don't have a, a we'll crosscut sled, to that in yeah. The description. Okay, so once you have that, then you can use this as your guide here. And I'm just going to set it. I know I'm pretty good there. Now the infield. I'm going to have about a, a two inch border. Um, maybe a little less than that. So I'm 16 and a half here. So the border, if I, if I go two inch on each side, I'll be a 14. I need 12 and a half overall. So these pieces, these triangles have to be six and a quarter, at least six and a half to give me enough to work with. So I'm going to set this. If we just make a little measurement here with this that's good we come pretty close but this will work fine so I'm gonna set it down here I'm gonna bring it around like that so I can get these guys first this will take 
That's a couple minutes here. Now, I'm getting a nice, pretty clean cut, but this isn't my final cut. This would be just, uh, I don't trust it, but I mean, maybe, whoops, I just slipped a little bit. So that's why I won't trust it now. But to get really crisp cuts, it's best to just do one sheet at a time to know that you're going to really nail it because it can move around, as you saw. And it also, um, you just have better pressure when you're dealing with one. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we've got our our pieces, and we're going to number them before we go too far. All right, so I'm going to go one, and then we're going to go two. Guess what comes next? Tres. And in French, we say... Quatre. I don't know if I'm saying it right. There are actually Canadian people watching. I need the... Uh, Canadian people to tell us how to say that. <laughs> I wish they were here. All right, so we've got one, one. So that's the front. These are the way they came. So I'm trying to keep everything oriented nicely. So I'm going to flip over, and this is the back of one. And then I've got two. This is the back of two. We're just going to put a circle and so on. And the back of whatever, quattro. All right, so there we go. Now, I'm gonna, I have to trim these a little bit. I'm gonna set it just to take off about a 16th of an inch off each of these. I could use my rule to stay true to what we were doing before, trying to keep them nice and consistent, and then, Nice light cuts. Here you go. And then this way. There we go. And just keep going through. Peter's asking if you're going to shoot those. Do you know what that question is? Shoot means? them? No, I'm not, Peter. Oh, and you're shooting board. Uh, no. I This will... Um, you could, I mean, I suppose, could sandwich them or something. But if your if your square is really square, then you'll be all right. Um, you'll get a nice cut, and you can always fix it up. But I've done this before, and it comes out pretty nice. It's pretty square. We'll 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 see how it goes right now. Okay, right about there. So, because we have that short grain on the point, I like to cut them in this order and then come this way so that I, if I break a little bit, well, you just gotta be really careful to preserve the point. Okay, when you're making these cuts, make a light, light pass, and take time to sharpen your saw. We have a video, as you mentioned. I'll put that in the direct the description as well. I'm not going to cover every point on this, but I just want you to. I mean, I'm making the whole top. We may ha we may have to do a more intensive thing because. It's hard to cover it all in a short evening like this. But now that we have them all cut, we've got our face and then our back. So in order to, this is going to be a book match, a four piece kind of match. So we're gonna come away from number one. Number two will be flipped, so we're getting a book. And then we're gonna put three over here rather than going around because if, if you keep going around 
with the grain, you, you're taking different layers of the board, basically, and the grain changes as you go deeper. So then you would have four right next to one, so that grain match wouldn't be quite as good. But I did this hardly. I don't expect this to be a great grain match, but it doesn't really matter that much because of the figure in this wood. So that three gets flipped, and then four we want face up. So now we've got our whole setup here. So then you, you just tape them together. I'll do this for, you're going to take your time more than I'm going to right now. But uh, you could have a straight edge here to get this one. But I'm going to eyeball it. Looks pretty good right there. See, that's it. Let me get my roller. Tom, did you get that veneer from Certainly Wood or do you remember? Uh, this veneer came from the end of Berkshire veneer. Uh, so, okay. yeah, I got that from... They closed last year, sadly. Yeah, we talked we about do, that here. We do really like, cer Tom really likes certainly wood, so if somebody's yeah. asking... Yeah, I'm sure you can find source. really high grade. They've got a ton of beautiful wood there. So, um, some somebody spoke last time and said they went by there. So... Um, and they've got an amazing supply. You can look at everything right online. Everything's photographed. All right, so now I'm bringing that point in, and I want to really try to match it so it's right in line with the other. Then we'll just go right across. And I'm just pulling. I'm just using masking tape here. You can use veneer tape as well, but... Um, when I'm getting, when I'm serious and I have to really have the joints, I might be putting some pressure on the joints. I will go with veneer tape because um, it shrinks. It's like, yeah, but it's so sticky that it's, it's hard to work in a quick demo like this. So now I want this last piece to fit in here and hopefully it does. Let's see how it goes. We'll just push it in there. And let's pull right across. And right here. And trace. Or in French, as we say. <laughs> what the, you already got your one. What do we say in French? Trois. Trois. Please don't do that. I'm not good at it. <laughs> you're very good. You're just, it's just funny that you're self-conscious. That's what makes it. I must have had something wounding in the early years. I don't, I don't know. Those seven years of French you took. <laughs> I know. You would think. You would think you'd be more ready to show it off. But it's okay. Look. It looks beautiful. We've got a beautiful looking table right there. But then once you've stitched across the joint, you can do it every two, three inches, depending on how you're feeling about it. Then I'm going to come across. I'm going to go the whole length. And this really holds it together. So we'll do this over here as well. Right down the middle. And... And we're going to roll that. And let's check it out. Okay. Oh. Pretty nice little match, huh? Oh. We've got this. Is that, are you seeing the light switch? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it's got a lot of, a lot of activity and the grain is close, but it's not perfect, of course. But, you know, it's pretty close here and there. And, um, <clears throat> There you go. So that's the infield. Now, we're going to want a two-inch border going around. Before you put a border on this, you have to create a square. So you want to create in this method. Okay, there's, there's a number of methods here to do this. You could glue this field into the center of our top and then use a marking knife to score around and cut it and then piece in the veneer to it after it's been glued down. But I'm using, I'm, I want to show you this method of making the entire pattern with the, uh, the border already on and gluing that whole thing down 
at once. We're not going to glue it on tonight, but I want to show you the process of making it. And so to do that, you're going to have these four corners. And one of the things you, it's a struggle sometimes to deal with is having the miters hit in the corner. Mm. And um, it's, it gets tricky sometimes, especially when you glue the whole, you make your whole pattern and then you want to glue it on. What if the corners don't match up? You have a better shot to make them match up if your field is square and your top is square. Now I know I cut this square on my dead square squ uh, crosscut sled. So this is dead on. And then I also, so I made a template to cut out the infield. So this is 12 and a half. And this is going to be cutting our infield. Now this is really square too. So I've got these two and I know that if I frame this well, I should be able to finagle it so that all of the seams land on the corner before that gets joined down. Okay. It's really important that you have a square thing to cut. And so to cut this out, you got to take a little bit of time and you have to just you're kind of blind here and you just move it around until every joint, every seam is hitting one of these corners. That's excellent. So we know, we know we had 90s in there because I made four cuts, excuse me, and, and the seams lined up perfectly. I didn't have any gapping on that last one. So here we've got this nice square and we're able to find where each point hits right on the seam. That looks great. So now we're going to take our saw and hold pressure and we're going to cut it out. Okay, you got to do this from the underside, obviously, because you've got tape covering the other side already. And it's fine to do it from the underside because you're getting a nice square, crisp edge. Now, I don't want to slip this. But I do want to spin it so I don't have to get in front of the camera lady. All right, there we go. So is there any uh, concern about having too much tape on your... Uh, um, yeah, you don't want to build the tape too much, but this is thin masking tape. So this is the cheap stuff you can get at like Walmart. And uh, it... You don't want thick tape because that will press in. That's what's nice about genuine veneer tape. It is thin, very thin, and... It makes a beautiful, it doesn't, even when you build it up, it's still not going to press into the material. That's one of the problems with thicker tape is when you put it in the press, that tape will actually dent by its thickness into the top. And so if you're more than like four thousandths, you'll see it. But these are, that's the four thousandths. Uh, masking tape. So there we go. Check it out. We got our square and all our corners are landing pretty nicely. So once you have your your square, now we're ready to put the border. I'm just going to kind of accelerate the border for now. I need two inch pieces now. So I'm going to go to my two inch tape right there. And just go ahead and Oh, that's Oops. nice. This is note to self. Pick a piece that's not quite as cracky. All right, I'm going to do another one. And so you have to just do this and to get enough to go around the whole border, which is you'll need at least four pieces, 17 inches long on this piece. So it's a lot like the edge veneer. You're going to just 
build it up and make it end to end, make it match and look seamless from the top view. Can you mention what you're doing there at the beginning, how you're going back and forth? Yeah, I'm scoring that edge so that when I pull across, I don't fracture these fibers which are running this way. So you initially score that and then make your cut. And the veneer saw sharpening, we talked about that a little bit too. Um, so there you go. So I would keep going with this, but I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> but here we go. You We've got, us. I'm just gonna fast track this. I just want to score that and let's we gotta work the same side there these may not be perfectly parallel so we'll be careful here okay there we go so then that'll come together nicely if I got nice square cuts, I should be able to set it against an edge. Oops, no, I didn't. It's okay. I'm going to just tape it and trim it after. And one more. Yeah, okay. Claude's saying one edge is 90 degrees and the other is tapered, so you have to keep track. Yeah, I try. I did cut both of them though. So yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. And then I'm going to just put pressure here. And I, I should have cut them a little wider if I was going to come back and do all this. But uh, just make it, maybe you want to rip them two and an eighth. We got a nice straight edge right there. And so I'll put a check mark. That's the edge I want to go against my field. Now let's check this out. See what it looks like next to the field. So it's pretty nice, but you know what would really sweeten that up is a dark line accent. Mm. So if you had a little dark line in there and then you put a line on the edge combined with the apron and the cuffed foot, pretty sweet. So let's I'll just go ahead and throw that line. You could plunge route that in later, but for this one, I want to actually set it up so that that veneer, we're going to do it with veneer. I've got a veneer cutting jig right here. I'm going to use this ebony to make the line. So I'm going to make a line right on here. This is my face up. And I'm going to trim a straight cut right here. Okay, so let's make our lines. Now this is just to trim it. And now that's good. Okay, so we've got a good straight edge there. Now to get consistent lines, you could eyeball it and measure, but they won't be perfectly right. So I made this jig where I have this fence here and I just took a piece of eighth inch or three mil um, Baltic birch and glued it on, tacked it here and I tacked it when this was on the table. So I tack it right on there with this plywood resting on the substrate. Now I'm going to uh, I want to get that strip, so I'm going to create a strip that's that thick or that wide. So I can do that by just taking my material that I just squared up and slide it under, hit my fence, and then come on down with good pressure right there. And that is going to pin the veneer right to the table. I'll get another nice light some light cuts and there having that chalk mark on there will give me 
the veneer I want. So you could do this any thickness, you know, whatever you want to put on there. Makes it easy to create some nice inlay or border lines. But now I want to get this on here and I want to create a dark line. So we've got a, we're going to tape that on there. Let me show you how that, that goes. Okay, and this is definitely over long, but push the ebony against the bottom edge and just pull the tape on there. Do it again. Just kind of work my way down. Keep on going, just like that. Just stitching it right to that straight edge. Okay, that's good. It's great. That's enough. Okay, so now we've got this issue of the tape, so we're gonna bring it up like this and flip it over. So we're gonna come in with the scalpel and just remove that tape. Just by leaning right against the veneer. And we can get rid of that. Oops. We will, I, I will put that scalpel in the description. A lot of people like that kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, this scalpel is famous. There you go. So there's our line, and this will be the side that has to be out. But you can see how, how it looks. What a difference. That is beautiful. So then you want to get it around your border. Wow, I'm actually closer to making it than I thought. But I'm, I'm just going to cut one of these corners. I've got a straight edge here. I want to make my 45 degree angle. So this angle here is actually... 135 and I would just line it up with the edge and make my miter cut. Oops, helps if you go all the way. I want to get it square out here, so, I mean to a point. Get it to a point so I should have paid more attention when I did that. And here we go, we're going to just, this you definitely have to make the light back cut because this is very fragile on the point because of the way the grain is running this way. Oh, I lightly broke it off, pushing it. I'm just going to keep going though. I would skin that again. Um, so then when, you, when you're actually laying this out, rather than working from the top, where it can be hard to actually see crisply the corner with the tape and all that, it's easier to do it from underneath. We're gonna match it up here, like if you come in and see this, you would come in, get that point right spot on, and then we just tack it from underneath here. Then we'll come across, and these are just to hold it temporarily. And then you'll come down this end and you can bring it in and make a little knife cut right at that corner. And I make a little chalk mark so I can find that. Then take this off. And you need to use your 45 again. So that'll come up. Out. I would align with the edge, align with the knife cut, and cut. But I don't have enough material because, as I said earlier, I didn't do it large enough. But then, then I would just go ahead and tack that from underneath and work my way around. So the next miter would hit that one. I'd gently uh, just tack it, make my cut, remove it, cut, then tack that one back. And I would just keep going around until I get to the end. And I've got one that I'm ready to put the last piece on, so let's do that. We are down to the last piece, so we're gonna be working on the underside. 
Wow. And yeah, that's pretty nice, huh? Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring this piece, we'll come in. Now we're going to slip this under the miter over here. And we get this miter right in here. Now, if, if that angle was slightly off, you can true it up with your saw. But this one's okay. I mean, you'd have to just take it out and chew it up. All right, so I'm going to just push that in and stick right on across there. Now I've got to just pin this. I've got to get it in position where it wants to be so I can get a nice accurate mark down here. This one, I put that line on here, and this is challenging because this veneer is not really laying as flat. When you do this, you probably have something a little more agreeable, and I have to like pull it in more. For a demo, it would have been smarter of me to use something easier, but where would the fun be in that? <laughs> wow, look at those grain lines, that lucked out. You don't actually, I wasn't planning that, okay? That's lucky. <laughs> Um, that they look almost like they match. They don't out here, but right in here, they're pretty close. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, you could go crazy and try to make that work, but... So now, with the, with the scalpel, you're going to use this and make a little knife cut right here. You got to hold that in there, nice, just a little knife cut. And then you're going to do the same out here because this, this miter might not be perfect, but it's close Miter enough. might not. Miter. <laughs> it might or might not be perfect. It, it miter, might be a miter. All right, so I'm going to take this off so I can get a nice cut on that. And here we go. And I was trying to abbreviate this, and so we're still a little over an hour. I see my little knife cut there and there. So I want to very accurately line this one up. Okay, there's a knife cut. Where's my other one? Okay, it's out here. Okay, that's got to be really precise, okay? So then I could, I could knife that, but I'm going to just saw it. Nice and easy. There we go. And let's see how we did. Bring it in. I'm going to get some tape here. So I'm going to tack it tight from the bottom side, and then we'll really tape it off from the top. Joseph says, has there ever been an hour-long SNL? <laughs> <laughs> Never. You're right. I got issues, I guess. I'm trying to do too much, maybe. Only just, in our imagination. An hour goes by so fast. So, I'm going to pull that over. Pull it up tight. Now we're getting close to our corner. So we're going to pull that up tight. All right, I'm going to get some tape across here. See, this might be slightly strained, though, you know, with all the puckering and everything. So it's nice to use real veneer tape if you're... Because I've seen where this, this masking tape can fail. If, like, say you were trying to pull together a gappy, <laughs> you're a little gappy, Sometimes this masking tape won't hold where the, the veneer tape does. All right, so that looks sweet. We're done there. So we're going to just flip it over and get it taped off on this side. Let's just really tape it home because this is the outside right here. This is the side we'll actually see. Go ahead and pull across there and pull across here. Thank you. 
and then we'll stitch right on down. I think I'll put one right here. And then all these seams will get long tape as well, but I won't bother doing that just now. So there you go. Let's get this down here. Now I can come this way and just get this corner and same on the other corner. And roll that out, get a beautiful joint there. And if we flip it on the back, we can trim that little bit of tape. Hope I made this big enough. <laughs> I made it two inches, but then I had that eighth was adding that little space. So it should be a little bit larger than I need. I'm gonna pull this. And now I you always you have to remember to remove the tape underneath, okay? If you don't your glue is going to fail and you're going to have a bubble and the tape telegraphs through. It's, I've, I've actually never done that, but I, I talked to Terry Moore, a friend of mine, and he had finished a beautiful table and he was putting the finish on it. And he started noticing these weird things. He's like, what's that? And then he touches it and then it dawned on him. It was all the tape that was left underneath like it might not have been much it might have just been like he did the last one and just glued it down without looking underneath it again wow um, so you don't want to do that so peter's asking will that go into the vacuum bag yes and um i actually set up my regular bag but i'm not going to do that right now i just want to show you so there we have a nice match but you would take your top and now this is where it being square is important. So you're going to just move it similar to what we did on the infield. And you get all these seams, get them dead on there. So I just move it around until I had it. Then I'd go ahead and trim it. And it would be trimmed just to size. Then I'd use a, a call and um, glue it on there. I would just roll it out and glue it on. And then I think we're going to put another edge line, a black line around. But we're going to have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> this is all I got. I don't have a finished one. But if we do flip this and put it on top, we can get kind of a look at what it's going to look like. So let's put it, slip it on top of our table here. So now, once this is done, it'll be, of course, nice. And then we'll put a black line around there as well. I mean, you almost could get away without the black line, but it does finish off the edge nicely. There you have it. Almost done. Thanks again for being part of our, our uh, shop night live here. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.